Hey there, cool kids. We're back with another technology review. This time, we're back to bicycles, and I'll be reviewing my Schwinn folding bicycle, this time on Making Believe. Yeah, I guess it's possible that I might have a, a folding bicycle addiction. <laughs> I'm probably never going to stop because I love these things. They're just my new favorite way to travel. Um, upcoming here on the channel, I'll be talking about uh, this Go Plus bike that I just recently be, uh, picked up. And together, we're going to do a full customization of this bike. It's pretty much brand new to me. So this is how it came to me with uh, what we will show call factory settings. It is secondhand, but uh, yeah, it's it's original. Here we have my Schwinn, which has uh, been fully customized already. Uh, <laughs> and we're gonna walk through today what I've done with it, why I love this bike, and some of its more awesome features. All right, so let's start with some of the customizations I've done to the Schwinn. Uh, I have added this little digital computer uh, that has, uh, there it is, a, mag a magnet in the spokes and a magnet sensor here. So every time this magnet comes past the sensor, it counts a cycle of the wheel, uh, and it tells you essentially how fast you're going, and it can track how uh, how far you've traveled on a given trip. It's like an odometer and a speedometer built into one. This was aftermarket. I purchased this on Amazon. I will try to find a link to this exact model. It works pretty well, uh, and if I can find it, I will drop it in the description below. Um, from my 99 cent store, <laughs> I got this solar light because there's no headlight on this bicycle. There are reflectors, but, um, you know, I like to be safe and, uh, this lets me do it without having to use battery power or, you know, anything more than the sun to charge the interior battery. Um, down here also for nighttime lighting, uh, I have two things going on. I've got some wheel spokes, which I love the sound of rolling around back and forth on my spokes when I'm going particularly slowly. Uh, when I start to go quickly, they all, you know, centrifugal force pushes them to the outside and they're not sliding back and forth and they don't make any noise. But when I'm going very slow, like when I'm stopping or stopping, or starting from a, a stoplight, uh, particularly when there are pedestrians on the bike path, they can hear me behind them, <laughs> which is a nice added benefit. But these are made out of glow-in-the-dark PLA. I printed them up on the printer, and they do take a charge quite nicely, and they glow um, when the sun goes down. It's the same stuff I used in the Oni mask that came out recently. If you'd like to see that video, it is uh, in my fabrication playlist. I also have these light-up um, they only light up when they have contact, but these are, uh, these go onto the, the air connector and, um, for the tube. And once you start going about 15 miles an hour, they do light up, uh, the, the force applied to them makes the thing go off and kind of gives like a cool green glow. And that actually happens during the daytime in addition to the night. All right, I did keep the standard reflector on the wheel and on the front of the Schwinn um, because no re re real reason to remove those. Uh, finishing up with the modifications I did on the front, I've got my phone holder here zip tied to the bar. Um, and this is the same phone holder that I used on the Swagtron e-bike. It works really well. I'm probably going to put one onto the new e uh, folding bike as well here when we customize that. And I've actually added a second phone holder down here. Uh, there was a time when I had two phones running and I just needed to, you know, monitor certain things <laughs> while I was riding my bike, I needed two screens to accomplish that task. But now what I primarily use this for is my phone up top um, and then a battery down here. So if I need to plug in my phone for an extra charge, I've got a, an extra external battery pack down there um, and that works out pretty well. Right, so moving along to the rear of the bike, um, on the back wheel, I have more of these uh, hub spoke sliders, and I've also got another light on the tube connection, the air connection down there, uh, same as the front wheel. Here I've also got a um, 
fluorescent slap bracelet <laughs> so I can put this on my wrist if I need to to you know make turning signals and get a nice reflection going for car headlights when needed um, and then more lighting underneath the seat I don't use these very often but I do have a couple of lights that uh, are battery powered and I've got some rechargeable batteries in there in case I need a kind of a rear tail light situation going on if it's really really dark and I'm out in the middle of nowhere riding after dark all right so this seat actually uh I got this with the bike but it is aftermarket and it is super comfortable cloud nine seat um I highly recommend these the seats that normally come on these e-bikes are like little and skinny and not the most comfortable things in the world and I really like this I can sit on this for hours and have no problem whatsoever um next up I added some awesome saddlebags. <laughs> Aren't these cool? These are relatively inexpensive. Um, and the Schwinn actually came with an amazing metal frame here that, that would support a lot of weight in the back. Uh, I added this wood frame in order to get my saddlebags to um, not bump against my tire or the, or the wheel well, essentially when they're flopping down like this. So that frame is really just there to keep the saddlebags kicked out away from the tire and not cause any damage to the canvas. Um, yeah, so I built this custom frame out of scrap two by twos uh, and it, it's working out pretty nicely. Finally, I have added a tow hook, nice and variable in case I need to tow anything. I've got a bicycle pump mounted to my wood frame and also mounted to my wood frame i've got a u bike lock this one is from on guard and it's super super tough it's taken a lot of battle damage as you could probably see by people trying to cut it and they have been unsuccessful to date so i am pretty stoked about this lock i highly recommend it if you were looking for a good bike lock get yourself a u lock like this and not a chain so again, this Schwinn is a folding bicycle, and it folds up in a couple of different ways. Um, it actually did not come with folding pedals. On this side, I've replaced it with one. I need to order the other one to complete the set, but those just push in and pop down, and that's actually quite nice. If you're gonna be carrying a folding bicycle, you don't want those pedals like pushing against your leg, uh, and it just makes it fold up a lot more compactly overall. That one's kind of old and it sticks, <laughs> but it does fold. Uh, secondly, the seat folds down, so you've got a clamp right here, and it just drops all the way to the ground. Uh, it goes pretty much all the way down on this particular bike. Some bikes don't. Um, they'll have a catch, but this one's pretty good in that front. Um, next up, we can fold the handlebars down. We have another clamp here that you can pop and take to the side and then the handlebars fold right over and everything i've mounted to the handlebars was needed to be mounted in such a way that it did not prohibit proper collapse when you're wanting to fold this bicycle up the final point where this bike folds is right here in the middle and there is a clamp here that also slides out same same locking mechanism that you see on the handlebars and then the entire bike will fold in half, you gotta pop it actually, a little safety catch there so that if this does come unlocked while you're riding, the bike doesn't lose integrity. Um, but then the whole bike folds right in half. And even with my wooden frame structure and my saddlebags attached to the bike, it breaks down pretty well. Um, it doesn't really, the only, the only complaint I have about the carryability of this bike is that it doesn't actually have a dedicated handle on the frame. You can grab it pretty much right here and pick it up. It's not too heavy. It's pretty easy to carry and it stays together and pretty intact, but it doesn't have a dedicated handle in this orientation. Let me just unfold it here for you again. I'm going to lift up, re-secure the bottom. Lift up. and re-secure the handlebars. And finally lift up and re-secure the seat. Now, my other folding bikes have a way to carry them in this position, but this one doesn't. And I think this is miss a missing feature here. In the swoop, there is a tiny break. And in my other folding bikes, you can get your hand through that and you can grab it right here. When I'm riding this bike and I run into a place where I can't get up over a curb or come down off of a curb, without really, you know, hammering my tires, 
uh, I like to just grab the bike, pick it up, and move it. And with this bike, you've really got to go for the handlebars and the seat in order to do that. And that's fine. Um, but, it, you know, one complaint, <laughs> even if it's a small one, this bike can do with a dedicated handle system. Um, but it folds really nicely. It folds really easily. And I enjoy using it like that. I can pick it up and throw it in my trunk, uh, take it out to the beach, deploy it pretty much wherever I need to go. Right, so let's talk about how this baby rides. By and large, it's pretty smooth. I, I like it quite a bit. There are no shocks, neither front nor rear shocks on this bike, but you know what? On a bike this small, you don't really need them. This is not meant for off-roading. This is meant for street cruising. Um, it's my workhorse. I take it to the grocery store to pick up groceries. Um, I don't really put this bike through a lot of rugged off-road style riding. Um, so shocks are not entirely necessary. It does have a seven, um, seven gear speed. It's Shimano uh, gear system, and that's fantastic. It's high quality. It's going to last a lifetime. Uh, the gear shift is a Revo shift. It's one of those ones where instead of having a thumb dial to go back and forth, instead you turn it forward and backwards, located here on the right handlebar. And I find that to be super intuitive. You pull back if you want to go into a lower gear. You push forward if you want to go into a higher gear. And I do that without thinking, and I don't even really need to look, unlike other gear shift knobs, at what gear I'm in. I can just kind of feel it and, and turn as I go, and I, I really like that about this bike. Now, as far as height, I'm not a tall person. I'm only about five foot seven. <laughs> so the seat goes plenty high for me, and it actually goes higher than I need it to go. I, for, from time to time, when I am folding this bike up, raise the seat too high and get on the bike and realize, oh man, I've got to put that down. I got to readjust in order to get it right for me. The one thing I would recommend if Schwinn is going to revisit this design in the future is there's no way to adjust the height of the handlebars. So the height of the handlebars versus the height of the seat, that's a, that's a scenario you can't alter. If you're say six foot three, six foot five, and you want to ride this bicycle, you can get the distance between the seat and the pedals right for yourself so that you can use your long legs, but you're gonna be really hunched over on these low handlebars if you're that tall. Being a short person myself, this is not a problem. I, I usually have my seat just a little bit below handlebar level and it's super comfortable for me and I, my short legs work just fine <laughs> with that kind of ratio going on from the seat to the pedals. But I can understand being a taller person and not really enjoying the ride on this quite as much as I do now. All right, everyone. Well, that is it for my review of the Schwinn Folding Bicycle. I hope you enjoyed this episode, and I will see you next time on Making Believe.